Don't look now, but there are some new bullies on the block. And it's the Orlando Magic, the top defense in the league, and once again proving that this is no fluke. A big in-season tournament win for Orlando and another, another identity-defining win. We'll get to that today on Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is it's November 22nd, 2023. My name is Philip Ross. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic's defense makes another big statement. And it wasn't just about the numbers. We'll get to those. But it was about the physicality that they played with. There's a new uber-long team on the block. It ain't the Toronto Raptors anymore. We'll get to that. Plus, the Paolo Bencaro Sants. The recovery of Palo Bancaro after a slow start to the season. We'll break that down coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Don't forget the Orlando Magic are back in action tonight at the Amway Center. They take on the Denver Nuggets. The defending champions make their only trip to Orlando. See Aaron Gordon, Nikola Jokic, and the Nuggets tonight at 7 o'clock. If you can't make the game, you can check out all the action on the SiriusXM app uh, with the local broadcast. Every local broadcast is on the SXM app. Search for Magic. Okay. We have known... This entire season, we have known this entire year what this Magic team was going to be about. Jamal Mosley said it. Every player, almost to a man, said it. This is going to be a defensive team. This is going to be a team that bets on its defense, that believes its defense can carry the day, uh, is going to push this team over the top and, and allow this team to be the best version of itself. Say what you want about that decision, and there are people who don't think it's the right decision, but this team was built to be a defensive team. And so they talked a big game. Again, they they said, we're going to be a top 10 defense. Privately, as revealed on Magic All Access during the preseason, Jamal Mosley said, I believe we can be a top five defense. I believe there are two or three players who can be all defensive team players. And objectively, we could say, yeah, sure. That, I believe that. I, I can see that. But can they walk the walk? Are this, is this just talk or are the Magic actually going to be one of the best defensive teams in the league? I will not blame anybody for thinking, maybe not. Because again, this team hasn't done it yet. Yeah, they had the last 57 games of the season last year. They were sixth in the league in defensive rating, but we had not seen this team do it. Well, we are now 13 games into the season. Uh, 14 games into the season? I don't have a record. I don't know. Um, We are now 14 games into the season. And the Magic's defense is not going away. They're the number one defense in the league. And while the Toronto Raptors are not the strongest offensive team, I want to go beyond the numbers. We'll give the numbers here in a second, but I want to go beyond the numbers. I want to talk about what this team's defensive mentality is. And quite frankly, it is to punch you in the mouth. The Magic are physical. They are disruptive. They are getting deflections and steals. This is a team that just punishes you. And yeah, you might score here and there. You might do what Toronto did and shoot 50% from the floor. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter because the Magic are out here for blood. To be a great defender, you've got to be a pest. You've got to be pesky. You've got to get into guys. You've got to be in their space and make them uncomfortable. 
It is not easy to play defense in this league. If it was easy, everyone would do it. It's not easy. All the rules are tilted to the offense. The three-point line is the great equalizer. It takes a lot of hard work to be committed defensively, and it is not for everyone. It is something that you either have or you don't sometimes. But this Magic team this year has found its defensive voice. It has found its defensive group. It has found its defensive identity. And honestly, look no further than Jalen Suggs. Look no further than what we've seen from Jalen Suggs. On the very first play of the game, Jalen Suggs grabbed a rebound, went full court to the basket before the defense could get set and made a layup. It was an aggressive mindset that is the definition of this team. And Jalen Suggs plays at a different pace than everybody else. But it was that that is who this team is. Take another possession. Jalen Suggs hits a three, gets back in transition because the Raptors are trying to beat the Magic down the floor before they can get their defense set. Gets Pascal Siakam in the post, dives in front of him to force a steal, gets back up and drains a three all in one sequence. As Steve Cerruti of the Ringer put it, that is why Magic fans will fight anyone to the death that claims that that wants to harm Jalen Suggs. For the second straight game, Jamal Mosley said Jalen Suggs nearly played himself to exhaustion because that dude is just flying all over the court. And again, say what you want about Jalen Suggs, and, and there's plenty to say, and, and there's plenty to get into with regarding his offense for sure and his shooting, especially. Say what you want about him. But he is, as Cole Anthony put it, the head of the snake of this defense. It is impossible to watch him play and not want to match his energy, not want to match his effort, his intensity. It is impossible not to want to defend at the level that he defends. That's who this Magic team is. That's what this Magic team does. And guess what? They don't care if you are in the way. They will foul. They will poke. They will deflect. They will prod. They will get under your skin. And again, you can break them down a little bit, but they keep finding a way. The Toronto Raptors, in a lot of ways, had a good offensive game. They shot 50.7% from the floor. 14 for 28 from three. 17 for 22 from the foul line. They had 29 assists. That's the profile of a pretty good game. They scored 107 points. But they only had a 104 offensive rating. They turned the ball over 24 times for 31 points. The Magic scored 23 fast break points. And Raptors only scored 36 points in the paint. Orlando had 68 in the game. There, is a, there are a lot of numbers there that would suggest the Raptors should have been fine offensively. And this look, this Toronto team is not a good offensive team at this moment. But the Magic fought, cajoled. They disrupted everything Toronto did. And for one of the first times this year, Orlando turned that disruption directly into offense to pummel their opponent. Yes, that's right. The Magic pummeled the Toronto Raptors. It was an 11-point lead at the half. The Raptors did not really get any closer than that. The Magic outscored Toronto, if you must know, 59-51 to 51 in the second half. It's a second-half win. Yay! But look, we all know who this team is and what this team is about. This is a defensive team. This is a team that plays together, that is committed to its to its principles on defense and as quickly established that this is their identity. They're physical and they're going to make every team they play feel them. I cannot recall seeing a defense from the Magic this aggressive in a very long time. Um, our, 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 my good friend Anna Papa Giorgio. Uh, suggested that this defense is as close to the heart and hustle defense as we have seen. And frankly, 
I cannot disagree with them. Jalen Suggs is every bit the past that Daryl Armstrong was in those years, probably more. And look, I didn't even get into the fun stats. Go get Tadze with five blocks. Uh, Jalen Suggs with a couple steals. Um, Bronze Wagner with a couple steals. The Magic did a number on the Raptors. And frankly, they just bullied them. Frustrated Toronto to no end, even on a night where they shot the ball well. They had no chance in this one. The Magic got a huge win and continued to cement what their identity is. When we come back, we're going to talk about Paolo Bancaro and the big game that he had and how it is of a piece with his latest play. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word for our friends over at eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire every week, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out for us this week. On this week, sorry, eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. And look, we got to go someplace that uh, we know very well from last week. We'll give a little shout out to the opponent here, Alex Caruso. He was inserted into the starting lineup had big games against the Orlando Magic. Yes, Paolo Bancaro got him on that game when he shot, but Caruso was the one guy who could hit threes. He gave the Bulls that go-ahead shot on Friday, and Caruso remains an appealing fantasy option until he inevitably gets hurt. I'll go and add in my fantasy pick as well. Goga Batadze keeps racking up rebounds, keeps racking up blocks. He had six assists in this game. Wendell Carter is not coming back for a while. We're good. We'll get an update on him after Thanksgiving, uh, probably. But we're probably not going to see Wendell Carter for another couple of weeks. So keep Goga Batadze in mind as well. That's a free one for you, Josh, if you want it. Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is all about each player being a perfect fit. It's the same with your vehicle. If you have, um, it's the same with your vehicle. We all love our cars. It gets us from point A to B. They are a part of our family. So make sure you take care of them and get the right fit. With more than 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. I'm gonna, I want to spend some time uh, in our second segment. We're going to do the deeper box score dive here in a minute, but I, I want to spend some time uh, talking about Paolo Bancaro um, because he is continuing to put in some really, really impressive games and, and, and some, some nights that are really exciting to see uh and 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 you know we're seeing i think now the growth we were expecting from Paolo Bancaro. Um let me put up his numbers if you're watching on YouTube you can see his numbers here um and of course uh before before i go any further i apologize for 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 not getting the ad reads in don't forget locked on is launched the first ever national sports 24/7 streaming channel on YouTube locked on sports today is here for you to cover 24/7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on Plus the national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel today. Apologize for that aside. Had to had to get that in. Um, definitely check that out. But Paolo Bancaro, you know, he obviously had this really, really slow start um, and had this really, really kind of uh, jagged start to the year. And, and there's a lot of hand-wringing, but he has really, really come along. Let's just take... Tuesday's game as a for instance. Um, here are his numbers. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see them on the screen. Paolo Bancaro, 25 points, 10 for 20 shooting, five rebounds. Um, he did have three turnovers, added three assists. Those numbers have been up for most of the year. Two for three on three-pointers, only three free throw attempts. He's been a little bit lax on that lately, but this was just a great overall game from Paolo. 
Yeah, plenty of highlight real shots, including that unbelievably difficult angled shot at the rim. Paolo is playing with a lot of confidence right now. And the numbers back this up before we even get into like what we're seeing on tape. Here are the numbers. Since that game against Utah Jazz on November 2nd, so in November, Paolo Bancaro, so these are nine games, is averaging 21.4 points per game on 49.6% shooting, nearly 50% from the floor on 15.2 attempts. He's shooting 44.4% from three on three attempts per game. And the only place we really can complain, 70.3% on free throws on 7.1 attempts per game. He's added 7.4 rebounds per game, 4.4 assists per game, 1.9 stocks per game. Turnovers are the only thing that's really high at 3.9 turnovers per game. This is the Paolo Bancaro sans. Um, this is what we expected from Paolo Bancaro. This is the kind of play, this is the kind of growth we expect him to make. The scoring's there, the efficiency's there. He's trying to make passes, he's trying to make the right plays. His three point shot has come a long way as well. Bancaro is playing really good basketball. And you can see that throughout Tuesday's game. He was kind of picking his spots. He was hunting mismatches. He was making quick decisions. He was using his dribble to test where the defense was going to come. Uh, he had one sequence of plays, I believe it was in the early fourth quarter, where he got the ball on one side of the floor. Toronto, just kind of tired of him scoring, brought Grady Dick over as the low man all the way over to, to, to start doubling him early. And he whipped a pass to the weak side corner to Gary Harris on the money. Harris missed the first attempt, made the second attempt. That was the last time Toronto tried that defense. I want you to, next time you watch Bancaro, watch how he reads defenses because he is seeing double and triple teams again. Um, teams know he is playing exceptionally well. And again, it's your star. Everything revolves around your star. And, and you know, Franz had a really nice game too. I don't want to take anything away from him. But Paolo is the guy. He's the guy with the gravity that everybody's watching that is waiting to see how he can twist the defense. And what he's learning this year, and obviously he struggled with his turnovers this year, what he's learning this year is how to be patient and make and twist that defense. How to wait to read the defense and make the right pass. And look, if he's made mistakes anywhere, it's in trying to squeeze passes into tight windows that aren't there. You know, overly anticipating those passes. Zach Lowe pointed this out on the uh, uh, on on his ten things post on Friday. Paolo is making these difficult choices, these difficult decisions, and he's getting a few of them wrong. But that's okay as long as he learns from it. We've seen these high assist games. We've seen him struggle with turnovers. It's going to be an up and down road a little bit. But the scoring is there again. All that hand ring about his inability to finish at the rim and, and struggle scoring the basketball early in the season, that's way in the rearview mirror because he has been as consistent as can be throughout November in the last nine or 10 games. Um, this game marked his, I believe, sixth game this season with at least 20 points. That's six out of 13. Um, that's still going to come and going to continue to build. And Bancaro has had some fantastic, fantastic outings. And obviously, so much of what this Magic team does is built off of Paolo. It's built off of that. Just like how Jalen Suggs is kind of the engine of the defense, Paolo Bancaro very much is the engine of the offense because the Magic trust pretty much every player to be a point guard, to be a playmaker, to lead this team and to initiate offense. Bancaro has found ways to play off of players. He's found ways to attack the glass. He has done it all. And this was another really solid game. Again, 25 points, an efficient 10 for 20. Even Cole Anthony had to mention that in the post game. Just doing it all for this team. Getting to his spots, shooting with extreme confidence, getting to the line still. Like, Paolo Bancaro is that dude. And, and obviously, we still expect him to keep getting better and better. We'll go through the final box scores. Your line of magic defeat the Toronto Raptors. We'll update you as well on the in-season tournament scenario. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at FanDuel. The NFL season is here. We are already into the deep playoff chases. The season passing the midpoint. 
it's still time to get in the game. There's still time to get into the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money bet, money line bet. Sorry. That's a hundred and fifty bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over unders, and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season today. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. As we always do, let's go through the final box scores. The Orlando Magic defeat the Toronto Raptors 126-107. to We'll update you on the in-season tournament scenarios at the end of this. Let's get to the box score today. Um, I, I just did the big big deal on Palo. 25 points, 10 for 20 shooting, 2 for 3 from deep, 3 for 3 from the line, 3 assists, uh, 3 turnovers and a block. The turnovers are still the big concern, and that's a number that's going to have to get down, but he's not like Cade Cunningham level bad. He's making mistakes. He's learning. You can see him thinking again, like I, I will really stress this. Watch Paolo Bancaro work, watch him think, watch him read the defense. That's the big step for him this year. The three point shooting's great, and hopefully that continues. If he's a 36, 37, 38% three point shooter, it's game over. There's, there's going to be no way to defend him other than making him a passer. And that's quickly turning into a strength of his, too. This kid is really, really good. He's becoming a complete player. The Magic have empowered him. And frankly, like, He's become a better defender too. Everyone's doing their job defensively. And that's 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 the fun part. Let's start there then. Jalen Suggs. I talked about him a little bit. 18 points, 6 for 10 shooting, 2 for 4 from deep, 4 for 4 from the line. 3 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. Did have 2 turnovers. But Jalen Suggs is just everywhere, man. Um, You know, we say this all the time. You know, anytime we ask about Jalen Suggs, Jamal Mosley said, did you see him? Did you see him? Like, everybody on this team knows Jalen Suggs is the heart of this team. Like, he sets the tone for this group defensively. He, you know, I don't want to say dictates what this team does, but he very much, um, he very much uh, uh, just kind of says, okay, we are a strong defensive team. Uh, and play and like plays that style. Like he sets the tone. Like he brings everybody with him. Like several players said, what he does on the floor is contagious. Like he plays with so much effort and heart. You have to at least try to match it. You're not going to, but you have to try and match it. And the fact that Jalen, it's not just aimless heart and energy. And that's something even Suggs has said he's trying to be better about. You know, he's going through his grounding exercises with Arnie Kander to try and try and slow himself down and 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 be present. Um, so much of what Jalen Suggs does is, you know, it's, it's just good. Like, like, I don't know, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, it's just good. It's, he's just so good. Um, and so like, he, like he sets the tone for this team. Like you're not going to take him out of the starting lineup because he makes everyone play that much harder defensively. And, and, and that helps the Magic take the lead. Like everything they do offensively comes off the defense. I mean, this team had 23 fast break points, 31 points off turnovers. Like when the, when this team is rolling defensively, their offense rolls with it. And, and, and Suggs is kind of the leader of that. Um, you know, Cole Anthony said it's both Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Isaac. They're both clearly the kind of best like impact defenders on the team. Isaac had a nice game as well here. Um, four for six shooting, nine points, three rebounds off the bench, two blocks, like just, you know, he makes big defensive plays that energize this team. And again, you have to match their energy. You have to at least try to match their energy to stay with them. Franz Wagner, really nice game as well. 17 points, eight for 17 shooting, one for four from deep, four rebounds, two assists, three steals, just active everywhere. You know, again, the shot hasn't quite come around to where we want it to be, but he is still playing very, very well. He's still scoring. He's still being effective. You know, making threes has kind of been the thing for him this year. He struggled with that, but he is making great decisions at the rim. He's crashing and cutting really, really well. The, the Toronto team, because they switched so much, there were a lot of cuts available, and Orlando did a great job cutting and passing throughout the game. Team had 31 assists on uh, 50 field goal makes. That's that's an incredible number. Um, just really good work overall, and, and again, just played so well. Um, Goga Batadze, only five points. He's not out there to score. It's two for six from the floor. 
Uh, only four, only uh, had seven rebounds, six assists, five blocks. He's one of three players this season to have games of five points, five rebounds, five assists, five blocks. Anthony Davis is one of the other ones. Like it's it's a crazy group. Um, the Tadze is you know going to struggle offensively. We're not expecting him to score a ton, but he did a great job on the glass. He especially the offensive glass. He made really smart passes and smart decisions. And, and look, he's still got some things he's got to improve on there too. Uh, and then he's just, the magic go, they can rely on him for some rim protection. Um, he has stepped up really, really well. I wrote about him on Orlando Magic Daily um, uh, 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 or late on Tuesday. He just steps up when the magic need him to step up. And, and it's been a lot of fun to watch that part develop as well. And, and him to take that step uh, in his development too. Um Notable players off the bench. Um, let's see. Cole Anthony, 15 points, 10 assists. Uh, you know, Cole Anthony gave all the credit to his teammates. Did a really good job leading the fast break. You know, I want to take a look at the Magic's pace. I think the, Ma the Magic's pace has been up lately, and they played some fast-paced teams. But their pace is up lately. Their fast breaks are up lately. They're getting a little, lot better at that. Jalen Suggs is a guy that wants to push the pace. He's, he's He does not slow down for anybody. Cole Anthony also working a lot more to push the pace and get up and down the court and try and get early offense. You know, Cole tends to take some of these like cruddy mid range shots, but generally making good decisions. Generally the guy, you know, he's there, he's just there to stir the drink in that second unit does a really, really good job at that. And it had a really nice game. Mo Wagner, another 10 points, five for nine shooting to, you know, it's a solid Mo Wagner game. Gary Harris, 10 points, four for seven shooting two for five from three. Uh, Joe Ingles only one assist, but sure felt like more had the best play of the night. When he did the ball fake, when he uh, had a ball, a couple ball fakes, uh, and then drained a three on the Raptors. The Orlando Magic shoot 50.5% floor, 50 for 99 from the floor. Toronto just 75 field goal attempts. They were 38 for 75. Orlando 12 for 31 from three. So they hit their threes this game. Only 14 of 20 from the foul line, only 20 free throw attempts. You're not going to see the Magic win a lot of games shooting fewer than 25 free throw attempts. So that was one they got away with. 14 offensive rebounds, though, help as does 24 second chance points on 11 for 15 shooting. Again, Orlando wins the paint 68 to 36. Toronto shot the ball well. They weren't getting good shots. Orlando, they were taking shots. Orlando was, you know, happy to take, have them take. And the Magic were contesting those shots very, very well. Toronto had a good shooting night. They still got blown out. That's how good this defense is. Again, I want to reiterate, this defense is very good. They're ranked number one in the NBA right now. They're playing Denver, so that may not last much longer, but uh, they're playing Denver on Wednesday. That may not last much longer, but this defense is very, very good. I am serious about this. Believe in this team. This team's defense is for real, and it's going to take them pretty far this year as far as what their goals are. Uh, again, the Magic defeat the Raptors 126 to 107. Uh, like I said on my challenge yesterday, crowd brought it tonight. The crowd really was another sellout crowd at the Amway Center. Um, Great energy in the building. Uh, you know, the Magic did not dress the game up like it was a playoff game. A little bit disappointed in that. I was hoping for shirts on on seats. Maybe we'll see that Friday. Um, but the crowd really brought it. There was, you know, organic cheering. Uh, really, this, I know, I don't need to say this. Y'all Y'all are listening to this. You're bought in with this team. This community is buying into this team early. And I love to see that because there's a lot to believe in with this group. Let's break down the in-season tournament then. The Orlando Magic improved to two and one in the in-season tournament with the with this win with a 19 point win. They are now plus five in the uh, in the point differential. They still trail Brooklyn, who's at plus eight and two and one. Boston is plus 14 at two and up. No matter what, Orlando must win on Friday to have any shot at advancing. They're currently behind Brooklyn, Philadelphia, and Miami or Milwaukee. Uh, for the wild card spot, Miami is a plus thirteen. They're plus twelve or something like that. Um, in the uh, in the wild card lead, they play Milwaukee on Friday in their in season tournament game. Milwaukee's plus thirty four. They beat Charlotte by thirty. They ran up the score a little bit. Right now, uh, you know, barring a blowout game and uh, depending on that result, the wild card may already be accounted for. Just just plain and simple that the wild card may already be accounted for. You know, pending shocking result here or there. The Magic got to take care of their business first. They got to win the game. Boston's the tournament favorite, so you know you keep anyone you can get against them is big. 
They need a three-way tie and they need to win on point differential. That's that's going to be their ticket out. The 20-point loss is still weighing very heavily against their record. They needed a close loss. They didn't get that. So now they got to make up some ground still. Um, and they do have to make up some ground or they need Brooklyn to lose. Again, first thing first, take care of your business Friday. That's the that's how you get to the next round. You got to win the games. Uh, you know, Franz Wagner said it really well after shoot around on, on Tuesday. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I, I I don't know how we need to advance, but I'm pretty sure we have to win these two games to have any shot. I don't have time to think about the math. That's good on you, Franz. Don't think about that. Let us do that. Um, we'll know the math a little bit more after Friday's game, but bottom line, Orlando has to win. They have to beat Boston. They have to force that three-way tie to have a shot at advancing out of the in-season tournament. But this is all we asked for. Like literally, all we asked for was to make this game against Boston matter. Make this final game of the in-season tournament matter. Orlando's done that. They've done it in very impressive fashion over these last two games. I'm expecting a very raucous and wild crowd for a 2.30 tip-off against the Celtics. It's going to be a fun time. I'm very much looking forward to it. But before we get there, we got Faces Denver Nuggets on Wednesday. So that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Match. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Richard Tune in Himmel, Google, and Spotify, Odyssey, and all of the places to podcast to your podcast and able to advice. Of course, you can catch us as well on YouTube and as well as on the Locked On Sports Today channel, the 24 7 feed, uh, covering really every sport, but the national shows as well as the local experts. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel today. You can also check out my work on my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub. Go to patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub to learn more. Orlando Magic Daily is currently undergoing a site maintenance until about noon on Wednesday. So there's no game recap up on the site if it's still working. I haven't tested it out yet. My At The Buzzer thoughts from Tuesday's game are available on my Patreon page for free. So you'll be able to read, read my thoughts on the game in written form, as well as here on the podcast. And, and very excited to roll out the new Orlando Magic Daily here coming up on Wednesday. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.